Can everybody see it? The whole works? We can. It looks good, Paul. Thank okay. you. And um, since we're kind of informal here, if you have a question, just unmute and, you know, you know, ask me the question. We don't have to wait till the end. Uh, that'll be fine. And uh, the story with this is I did this uh, for APS summer session uh, a couple of years ago. And Charlie said, what about sharing at the show, you know, the club one time? I said, well, it's always nice to have a backup just in case. And uh, so the backup came, as we mentioned, when our speaker for December uh, got ill. And I don't know if he will be able to present uh, in the future. We're hoping so, but I have not heard from him uh, since. So I've had this and then uh, I've, I've done a little reworking, taking some out, adding a few things in. Uh, we did a session. I did session one which is the first four shows, I think about 2017. And then uh, those were the shows to, which were uh, 1913 to 1947. And then tonight will be the 56, 66 and 76 shows. So that's what we'll be looking at. And so, is it, so it's revised. And the internationals got started because Europe was really leading the way. They had one of the first international shows, I think 1887, uh, 15 days long in Vienna. And the United States had some pretty good philatelists who were winning awards and, and being involved with that. And the uh, stamp, the group in New York and stamp executor, uh, exhibitors said, you know, maybe we can have one here. They started working on it. The group grew. Uh, they had 800 members, so by 1912, they were ready to do it, and they established the program here in, in 1913, which was in New York City. And uh, you can see Morgenthau and Scott were big people in it, still big names in the uh, field, and uh, they, they took a lot of the lead. I've always been curious what the IPEXs mean, and uh, you can see how that started out. Phil Telk International Exhibition all the way through. And then I have Interfill and Merrick Pex. I mean, not really use that uh, term since. And um, most of them are on the sixes, except the first one. And then uh, on the 50th and 100 and 150th anniversary, or uh, 50th and 100th anniversary of the United States first step in 1847, the show was given a year later. So instead of uh, 1946 was in 1947, instead of 1996 it was in 1997 and then uh now they're working on boston uh, 2026 and i'm working on somebody to come in and present to us on that show and uh well a lot of this is ephemera al shah brought up an interesting question months ago what's philatelic cover versus a non-philatelic cover and when you look at a lot of philatelic items are they ephemera or are they not you know ephemera are things that are designed to have a short life, often to be thrown out, cast aside. Uh, many people think of stamps that way. You just get them in the mail and you throw it out when you're done. But uh, others are collectible as well. And uh, so we're starting to think that, um, you know, we fit into this. And when we get into the shows, you'll see that it is all international, a national international uh, ephemera. When I went to the show in 2000. Seven, I was 2006. I was not really into collecting this stuff as much, and mm. I, I missed an opportunity when I went in 2016. I came back with a shopping bag full of stuff, you know, except for my covers that I had canceled. You know, it was all interesting and all free, and it was all kind of very nice and exciting to see. Uh, the ephemera comes in all sizes. Uh, for my friend in New Jersey, uh, sent me these, these are from the uh, 2006 and 2016 uh, shows. They adorn my walls down here. And this, you can see the examples, posted stamps, covers, handbills, show catalogs, passes, tickets. Uh, they're all going to be in here tonight. And uh, that's what we're going to be looking. And you can get even further, kind of the secondary level. You know, people who go on trips, they save their airline tickets or hotel brochures, uh, photographs. Um, you know, I brought my camera for the 2006 show when I was still doing photography. But I forgot to take pictures of people. And that would have been really nice to have uh, for this. But uh I didn't have it, but ephemera is going to be the one, and that's what we're going to look at. And just a quick through the next ones. I'm going to go through the shows quickly because uh, I've already covered some, and some are yet to be covered. But if we look at that, uh, 1913, um, the exhibition catalog, the the news, and the in the Gazette, 
Uh, at the time, they only had uh, 331 exhibits. They did not have the post office, nor did they have dealers, but they had places where um, you get like a, a modern version of a bulletin board where you could say, I'm selling such and such. I'm a hotel room, such and such, if you want to meet me there. So a lot of uh, buying and selling did go on, but not on the boards. They did have a bourse by 1926, and they'll just remember one of the, the lesser holy grails is the White Plains sheet. And you can see the menu uh, from the banquet. And let this lot of history alone uh, of, of this, a lot of fun to play around with. Uh, 36, more information is coming out. Uh, the Cinderella's, uh, sometimes there's several different kinds and brands and uh, producers of Cinderella's for the show. Uh, they had them for 2000, uh, I mean, 19. Uh, 26 uh, first day covers are here. Uh, the postcard was made while the show was going on and they sold them at the show. Uh, opening ceremony, celebration, or invitations. Um, remember Dave, and that's one of the awards was a plate and the information that is written on the back and it's a nice way of doing it. I don't know if they, they did medals too. I think they might've done some medals as well, but uh, these were really, really neat and the different color. Uh, means a different kind of uh, category and classification. But the, the beautiful Cinderella's uh, that year, um, 47, the, which would be the 100th year of the U.S. with Polk next to come out. One of the next was Brazil. And then uh, Queen uh, Victoria for the first stamp in 1840. Uh, beautifully engraved um, airmail cover. In 56 magazines, each edition of this had one of the shows uh, featured. And here, uh, Steve, Stephen uh, Rod uh, was writing about the FIPEX, but he had an issue uh, for each of the shows uh, in the year prece preceding the uh, show in New York. Uh, an exhibit lounge, another kind of uh, show labels. Uh, this was also a show label, a variety. If you, if you like labels, ephemera, Cinderella's, Go to these shows. Washington, D.C. This is a picture of the jury and uh, some of the most well known uh, collector or uh, judges and Phil Tuck experts in the world, right here in that picture uh, from the show in D.C. And so we'll be talking about that tonight and some of the exhibits and uh, postal products from the uh, post office. 76, you could see there's a newspaper article, the first, the Philatelic Passports. Uh, a beautiful stamp, my, one of my favorites, uh, Art Master cover uh, from Sweden. Uh, tickets to the show. Uh, the stamp issue from uh, from Maripex from uh, the post office. Uh, Steve made this up. It's the first, well, not, not the, but it's number seven through the uh, 88, 86 show of all the different stamps that came out. Just the souvenir that, that are made. And so many of the things that you see and you get are souvenirs that people make themselves. This is just the first day uh, program. It opens up and folds just with a great triangle stamps. Uh, 2006, the three issues that came out, uh, the show, opening show ceremony. Uh, this is one of the items from Germany, uh, foreign countries are in as well. And then um, ephemera, just business mail. Uh, to the show, to the executive director. This is our cancel uh, for our show cover at Lancapex in 2016. Then don't forget the pretenders. They're usually the ones in the old days who get their heads cut off because they're not quite legitimate. Something's missing, but there were two shows in 89 and in uh, 1992 uh, that were international shows, but they were not listed officially as the uh, quote, official uh, U.S. internationals. I'm, I'm starting to learn about those because I have materials. I want to organize those as well. And it doesn't take much not to be involved. Those of you who might have been to the 1964 World's Fair, that wasn't, quote, on the legitimate list. It, it missed some kind of box being checked. It didn't have this group involved, and therefore uh, it's not listed, but it still went down as one of the best shows and made money. So we have the Washington and uh, Washington World Stamp Show. Uh, you know all of these, Russia, their, their items, a lot of covers, uh, the tickets. But again, it was a pretender. And then 92, the Colombian, you all remember the different stamps that came out. And uh, I don't have a lot of these, you know, that 
I got off the internet. And this one uh, right here, these are the two of the few I had, the button and the pin and a beautiful engraved item. And those are the two uh, shows which are, are the pretenders. So now let's get into five pecs. That's the fifth International Philatelic Exposition in New York City. And um, it was held at the New York Coliseum. I have a picture of that. And because of an injury and a work injury and, and death of uh, workers, it was put off uh, for, for a bit. And it changed all uh, the printed material that was there. Uh, the Coliseum is one of the most expensive buildings built in the world. The show was open till 10 p.m. If you only had a cup of you at your booth, that's a long time to be working straight through attendance 200 to 250,000 and getting attendance at any of these shows is very difficult because uh, an accurate one because not everyone is checked off with a, with a buzzer and they're estimated and um, I'm, I'm reading about the eastern front and how many died there during world war ii and all i can do is estimates they don't have any the people were even keeping track they were they were killed and it, it, it was a mess so it's difficult. So, but most of them, they come out in here in that one. Again, sponsored by the Associated of Stamp Exhibitors for the fifth time. And uh, this was the fifth time the show was in New York City and they had great publicity. Uh, there is New York Coliseum. That's also on the stamp. This is a stamp uh, for the show. Uh, beautiful facility. Uh, now we have the Javits Center, which has kind of taken over it, but it's on Columbus Circle off uh, Central Park, uh, an item where somebody went and if you have a stamp, that's the right amount for the time that it's being stamped, the post office will cancel it for you. And, and there it is. They took this uh, engraved item and, and had that put on it. But the, the, the last previous three shows have been the Grand Central Palace. And so the committee was very interested in getting to a new, bigger, more modern venue. I had an elevator. Uh, nine football fields, uh, and it was the first of it was the first opening for this building. It had two other shows, the uh, New York Auto Show and a Photo Show. This was by far the largest. Uh, they had the two top floors. Uh, There's parking, air conditioning, very different from in the past. But it was delayed from March 3rd. You can see till April 28th because of the uh, the construction accident. I just put this in to show you that uh, even on Wikipedia to show a nice image of the Coliseum, they use that stamp over here. And things that go on when you go to APS for the summer, they have, they call them stampless others. So if your husband or your wife is not a collector, there's stuff for them to do and they arrange hospitality, but there's a lot of stuff going on in New York. Um, the place to be with My Fair Lady, the ball teams, uh, packages, bus tours, yeah, I guess I still hear people complaining about the Dodgers and the Giants leaving New York City, you know, how many years later. About 10,000 square feet of space, 16, the US, after the USBS, 16 windows with lines up to 100 feet uh, from beginning to end. They had several exhibits. So not just the stamp exhibits, but uh, things that you could look at, one on moving the mail, uh, how the stamps were printed, paper making, watermarking. At the McCoy's uh, Pan Ams, and they issued the greatest number of stamps to date or philatelic items, which we'll be looking at. Uh, this was one of them. And you can see it has the first day cancel. Up to this time, the stamps were issued first day at the shows itself. They were not used uh, as publicity earlier on, like they, they, they will be later. I think the uh, 76 is the first to do that. There's that beautiful stamp on an art craft. Uh, cachet, international airmail, and a uh, really great postal stationery at Fipex saying what it is, uh, again, on an art craft cachet. I don't know if I wanted to say that most of this material here that when you do collect the show information it is not very expensive uh, not at all very reasonable uh, liberia printed four stamps in honor of this show you know one with the coliseum one with the the logo on it two of the coliseum 
uh, the Statue of Liberty and that whole, you know, Africa, South America, that, that unity that a uh, show like this proposed. Uh, the exhibits, and here there was a good number of judges, 51. Uh, and you read the different accounts, you get different opinions. Uh, when you see such a disparity of number of uh, judges, even when they're listed in books, things that differ, you can see why it's difficult to judge the attendance. But there's uh, 482 competitors, 41 had uh, multiple exhibits. A good number of frames at 2321. Uh, they're limited to five frames and three albums. At this time, you could still use albums. The first show was lard was only albums. They, they put your albums in a uh, like a display case, you know, like a jewelry store, and uh, they changed the pages uh, periodically. The New York 16 show they're limited to eight frames and no albums. Same classes of uh, exhibits. The grand prize went to Uruguay. Best 1920th century, uh, won by women. A couple other exhibits. So when people went, there's just a lot of stuff to see. You, you didn't have to buy anything. Uh, it was just like going to the Philatelic Museum, but everybody likes to see the British Guiana. Uh, the Bureau had one, the Museum of Philadelphia, the Philatelic had one, the De La Rue printers, the post office, uh, Smithsonian collection, first time out of DC. Some of FDR's postal sketches were there. Uh, some of the rare die proofs, uh, a youth exhibit by Jack Minkus. We, we've talked about him in the past from Gimbals and all that he has done for the, uh, for the hobby at the time. I think probably maybe a commensurate one would be the um, Sundman's, um, with their stamp company. Uh, the Bourse. 121 uh, booths, 650 each. So that's 6,127 in 2020 dollars. So you can tell that that's uh, that was still pricey. They had the four, the, the largest with four singles, you know, giant with Washington Press, and they really came in and produced. They made the art craft covers, and they they made a lot of money. Gimbals, and then Scott stamping coins. The program was there. Um, a lot of information about advertisements, a lot of details about each, of, uh, not detail of each exhibit, but the detailed description of the exhibits and, and where to find them, uh, 180 pages at a, at a dollar each. What was interesting is that there's not a lot of coverage of the Bourse, just a list of dealers and very little else. Maybe they expected them to buy paid advertising. But they also had a list of uh, companies in the New York metropolitan area, which I found is interesting, who would put promotional items for this New York City stamp show in their, in the windows of their business establishments. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's like a bar graph, but there's 11 international shows going through 2016. You'll remember these, perhaps this. But uh, the difference is, is that there's 13 different catalogs and the reason being is that uh, in 1997, the Congress, Phil Tele Congress, had had a beautiful handbook with a catalog in it, in addition to their materials. And these two here were put out by Linz. Uh, those were the catalogs, very, very different formats than what we're usually, usually having. They can, you know, check how the, the, the pages went up and down. Uh, 320, 320 for, for the last was one of the bigger ones. Uh, 2006 as well. Uh, ephemera here, the daily list that went out in the military, they call it the plan of the day, but uh, this is what's going on. This is the news. Uh, this would go out to the um, to the press, the phone number there. CO5, if you remember, uh, 3491, we used to use those numbers. I think this probably stands for Columbus or Columbia near where the uh, situation was. The lounge, this was a nice souvenir put out by uh, Linz. It was a, it opened up and there's spaces for the four different philatelic publications. The owner of this one, he couldn't wait. He put one on the outside as well. And there's one on the back, but it did make a, a nice souvenir overall. Tickets, kind of colorful with the logo. You know, these are, Special like these, this is, you know, Herman Hurst, Hurst's Outbursts and uh, the books, 
a real character and promoter of the field. Uh, dealers would give these away. Uh, this was by the American Topical Association. Uh, they'd, they'd buy them, I guess, as, as a way of supporting, but, uh, but give them out. Every, it always looks like there, there's money involved in, in all of them, but I, I think most of them were free. I'd have to check on that, but uh, it made people think they're getting something for nothing. Uh, the post photo news release, uh, they're in uh, correct size proportion. So it wasn't that big, but this one, the different newspapers, all the details of the stamp and a picture of it. And this is an actual photograph, this part here. Beautiful Cinderella labels. Uh, these look like they're attached, but they're not. They're just placed very carefully on that uh, piece of backing paper. But the four different colors, American banknotes, and this was their last. Uh, some of the reasons for this was the great influx of uh, first day covers, especially at this show. Um, so you're starting to see uh, an interest go from labels to uh, first day covers, show covers. And um, the way it is now, the stamp, the, the, the post office has, at, at the shows has a different uh, for every day. Okay. You missed it. That was earlier. The two prospectuses or prospecti. Dave, yep. Uh, they came out. They came out ahead of time. One in April and one in November of '55 uh, for uh, for booths, I guess, and I, I think for um, prospectuses for the different uh, exhibitors. And you can see here, this is not a common one, but they had it listed uh, from March three to eleven. And remember, we said it didn't come out until April twenty eighth, but that was in the advanced uh, prospectus. Yeah. So yeah, when you have a a problem like that in the building and they can't open, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, by Nicklin, this is another uh, FIP Cinderella, and he's the one who did uh, the really beautiful ones from the 1939 World's Fair, the multicolor ones, the sheet. It's about this big with, I think, 55 or 56. Bob Noble, you got me one of those years ago, I think. So, yeah. Let's see. So that's 1956. Now we're going to go on to 1966 show. And it is, uh, starts out with a little drama. Don't worry about reading. I'll give you the Cliff's Notes version. Um, New York City was going to do it. They were going to call it Usipex. And it was canceled, though it was scheduled for March 1966. Uh, it was announced in, uh, ahead of time, November 64, that it would not be going on. A couple of different reasons. One was the finances. It was starting to get very expensive in New York City in the mid-60s. The booth prices would have been out of sight and um, rooms were expensive. The food was expensive. Just a lot of things that made people think and they didn't know if they could go forward with the show under those circumstances. Plus the other situation that was going on was that the uh, current ASC chairman was thinking they want to make this a kind of an exclusive show for dealers and exhibitors. After all, they had the uh, United States. Uh, American Stamp Dealer Association shows in New York that we've gone to from our club and they're great, they're great shows. But this was gonna be kind of for the elite and um, a lot of people didn't want that. So they said, well, we'll just cancel it. Well, that would have been a disaster. It was expected to go on every 10 years and uh, collectors and exhibitors and dealers, well, uh, they'd never forgive them. So to the rescue, it was Washington DC, a uh, man by the name of George Turner and he got together with his group, his Napex people. And they said, you know, we put on a big show every year. We have a lot of dealers. We have the contacts with the bureau, with the post office. There's a lot of things to see and do and tour in Washington, DC. And even if we only have 15 months to plan it, I think we can do it. And uh, the rest is history. They had the show. Uh, Association of Sam Exhibitors gave them the chance to do it. They did it and it worked out. Uh, some changes in the past it was the first one that wasn't held in New York City. Uh, it was very different. And it was the first one held in a hotel. So it was a little bit smaller in size. But as you'll see, even though it was smaller and they had fewer people, they made more money. And for the show in 1956, did not make any money. The show in 66 made a profit. And the profit in the show in one year goes to the show uh, 10 years later. 
So the money that was made in 2016, uh, the excess was gone to be seed money for the, uh, the group we were planning to watch. So, so you can see May 66, you see the Shoreham Hotel and Association of Stamp Exhibitors. I think this might have been one of their last years. Uh, here's a catalog. Again, not a lot of information about the, the dealers, but a good one uh, to begin with. If you like collecting catalogs, that's where you get all the information. And yet it, it, it's not totally reliable because between the printing of that and the actual carrying out of the show, things change. Uh, you know, you, you print a roster of the football team and on opening day, you might not have those some of those players playing because of injuries or whatever else. Just a lot of facts. Uh, a new group called the FIP, uh, Federation of International Philatelists, new rules in judging, and the SIP was going to mean the uh, CIPEX was going to use that, your Euro European version. And um, a lot more postal administrators from other countries were going to come in and uh, have exhibits and, and booth. And uh, the USPS got very involved involved with working with exhibitors to receive and to, to turn. They're almost like, like a partnership. Uh, and this was the last show to show albums as part of the exhibits. From then on, everything was gonna be in frames. As I mentioned, the first one held out in New York City. Uh, they had a court of honor uh, based on previous winners of FIP shows. So a lot of new things going on in the Washington show. I don't think there's anything too exciting here. You can always read it when it's online. Things are going on. As I mentioned, all the stuff going on in New York City, like the baseball teams and My Fair Lady, there's just as many good things going on in Washington, D.C., and that was one of the attractive points that I think uh, the NAPEX committee was able to sell the program with. You know, we can get to the post office, we can get tours, we can get to the printers, to the bureau, we can get tours. we got a baseball team. We got a theater, you know, barefoot in the park, uh, just a lot of neat stuff. And the last day was a Memorial Day, so they had a bus bus tours to uh, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Uh, they did it well, and, and people were very pleased with this. Uh, the Shoreham, again, the first hotel from 1930. Uh, Roosevelt's I had to get Roosevelt in, you know me, but his first his first inaugural ball, so they had special elevators. Uh, politicians lived there for years. Harry Truman played cards. Uh, some of the big, you know, Bob Hope, Judy Garland, et cetera, et cetera. And Rudy Valley played on opening night. And the exhibits, 32 judges. And uh, they had a, an official category, non-competitive court of honor. These were the ones which were in previous shows, which were winners, uh, non-competitive. Uh, the honor class, for, they who had won two or more FIP shows uh, and other competitive classes. But uh, they did not have a best of show. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the one on Swedish classics won the honor class. Uh, classic France, uh, the international one. And national was one on uh, for Confederate States for America. And they uh, they had a ball, six, 700 for their banquet, you know, the awards banquet, without any speeches or head table. I never thought I'd see that in the world of philately. Uh, the exhibits, a lot of them. 2,200 pages, 500 exhibitors. And they also had some disqualifications uh, where the issues were not boycotted by the FIP and they were not allowed to be shown. There's a jury, I showed the picture already, but like so many clubs, you have all the men and the women. <laughs> I think that's changing, especially if you look at our, our club as well. Uh, with a, good number of women in it. There's George Turner down there, who was the kind of the kingpin Paul, getting this going. Yeah. I have a question going back to the previous slide where you had boycotted items. Do you have any examples of those? What was? I like had, I just, I just took it out. What I'll do is I'll send it to you. A lot of it was um, North Korea, East Germany, well things done. like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was very, right. very very interesting. Yeah, I, like I said, I had to, I, I did take it out. Um, yeah, I it, see. It show on itself if yeah. you if you did the studying. Yeah, there, there's a whole big uh, couple pages of listings of ones that were were uh, turned down. Yep. Hey, Paul. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, in the late 90s at the horse auction west of Ephrata, I wound up with Paul uh, Turner's t uh, two large albums of material he kept for that show. And how they got to the horse auction, I'll never know. And I saw that. That's great about the hobby, isn't it? Yeah, the Scarcely <laughs> Souvenir card was in there. So yeah. I took that out for myself and I donated the both albums to the APS. Nice. So they have all that stuff today. And that must have been in the late 90s. Yeah, no. You know, what happens is, you know, it, it, you know, if I got hit by a gravel truck tomorrow, who knows where my stuff would go? You just never know, you know, no. where you're going to find something. And this was a Wednesday auction. They still have them on yeah. Wednesday night, west of Ephrata. And, and there they were. And luckily, I didn't know who he was. You know, luckily, I, it was I went auction to that show. and not thrown out. Yep. I was in college and I attended that show. I got the bus from Pottsville mm -hmm. and went to the Shoreham Hotel for that first day. And I yeah. never imagined I'd wind up with a collection like that, but I wasn't really interested, but I wanted to put it in a safe place. So I took the Sylvaneer card out and I sent everything yeah. else. It must have had everything in it. You know, question yeah. for you. Was it a was it a price? Was it pricey? No, no. Well, under a hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. for fifty, sixty dollars I got the whole thing. And the Sylvaneer card is worth that much or more for, for well, the beer of engraving. You, you can't um yeah, I think I have that in here. You, you can't go wrong with no, <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. I saved it. For, I saved it for history. Is that the APS were? It yeah, belonged. that's neat. Hey, Paul, yes. I just wanted to comment that this is the prices realized from the Turner sale. The Turner sale was actually in May 1981. This whole library and those albums were sold back in 1981. Okay, interesting. Because <laughs> we have the expert here. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So, so what you're saying then, Steve, is that it, it did actually get to an auction. Then the next person who bought it probably moved along and their heirs just gave it to a local auction company. Yep. Right. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you, guys. Yep. Jury, the, the Boris. Yeah. You can see that this is $100 cheaper than it was in New York City in 1956. So when they're contemplating, I'd have to, I'd like to get into to do the research and see what the prices were, would have been in 1966 in New York City, uh, where they're so high and were made enough to have them uh, cancel things out. I remember people who went to the 2016 show coming back on the bus, just the grumbling, you know, paying $20 for a, you know, a lunch, you know, a warm soda and a dry sandwich. That's why I brought my own. But uh, again, a good number of foreign postal administrators. Uh, the post office is very active at this show. Uh, commemorative stamp, souvenir show, all those. And uh, they had an area for people to work and service their uh, the materials that they brought with them and organize them. You know, the first day cover collectors come in with boxes, you know, and they, they, they get them all, all done up. And uh, they're very happy be, to, to do it because it's uh, unclaimed revenue. The Postmaster General's gems were shown, and um, you could get them, put them into the mail stream or, or get them handed back. These are kind of great. These are collectibles, the U.S. Postal Bulletin Board. You see these posted in the in the post office bulletin boards, and these are the three for the, the items at this show. And the first U.S. International Postcard, and the first one printed with a new duotone, a lith lithographic process. And you can see it's the first day of issue. And uh, somebody added this one on. Okay, the same day, the same cover, but the four different cancels. And I'd need a you know a specialist to to go and and, and talk more about those, uh, the different ones. And the this one had a gold kind of a stamp of the the show with the show logo on it. Here's our Mr. Zip blocks. But uh, you collect stamp on stamps, you all have one of these. This took two passes on the press, a couple of first day covers, probably a visitor just put a stamp, took it down from, you know, got the free envelope in the hotel room and went down, they stamped it, went home and put a mailing label on it. And this was the lowest denominated uh, souvenir sheet, I guess in history. And uh, they sold 50, or 50 million printed, 
Uh, many remained uh, around. We had a club donation of uh, several hundred of them in a, in a wooden box. And uh, we sold this as a donation, I think, at our silent auction uh, in um, back in August, you know, maybe five, 10 bucks. No clue. Sand dunes, uh, come country that probably doesn't exist, but somebody made them up. The official show logo there. Again, probably a great story behind this. Souvenir cards. Dave, this is what you're talking about? These two things? And yeah, that would be it. Yeah, uh, the first yeah. one, the first one was the one I really needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that one, that's a more valuable one. The uh, second one is a common one of the minor. Mm -hmm. did, he, uh, did, did George turn a shine? Was it signed or anything like no, that? No, no. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. but I was happy to get that. You know, that satisfied <laughs> me. And not being a collector of show items, I sent mm -hmm. everything else to the APS. But I also had a yeah. block of 500 souvenir sheets. And that's how they came. If you bought 500, they were sealed in a block of 500. Yeah. yeah. That's and what I, the donation was for a club. Machine. I had that from the show that I went to, and I must have kept it 10 years, and I eventually sold it to a stamp dealer. Mm -hmm. I got rid of it. I thought, what am I keeping this for? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And you can yeah. only fit so many of them on an envelope. You know, they're, yeah. they're not that cool. <laughs> but this is it. This, these are beautiful. They, they really are. And they're listed in Scots. Yep. Here's the black and white one. Yep, that's a common one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really neat. The show label in three languages. Pardon my uh, quickly uh, quick addition. Some more ephemera, pre-show publicity flyer. This is a souvenir book by the uh, American stamp ex uh, stamp exhibitors. Put them all on there in one. The admissions ticket again, ephemera, great stuff to have if if, if it floats your boat. A jury card. This one I like is, you know, when Lancopex comes around, one of my job is I'm um, begging to get people, you know, to help. And why don't you, I'm always impressed that I don't have to beg. I mean, we've had 35 to 40 people for the last several years, even if it's just an hour or two. And it, it really is great. But I, I can't imagine looking at, at a whole two football fields of frames and nobody to help you take them down. So this is kind of neat. Please help. There's the award winners listings. This is the first day cover uh, ceremony. If you go to the next page, there it is. Pretty standard looking. And this is the Harris catalog, uh, not as common. Uh, this part of it, at least, uh, with the white cover to, uh, honor the, to honor the show. And then that information inside about the show and, and about their business as well. That's 66. Now we'll move on to 76. Uh, this is Philadelphia. And maybe some of you are able to get here. It's called Interfill. And what was nice about it is it coincided with the uh, bicentennial of the United States. I remember flying from Virginia into Philadelphia that spring. The whole airport, uh, airport was lit up and all the construction going on. My buddy picking me up, he said, it's just bicentennial. We're going to be living it for years. And that was like two years, two or three years ahead of the Bicentennial, but it was really a busy time then. It was a great time to have the Philatelic Expo. And if you collect uh, Bicentennial issues, there's multiple albums out there. Every country in the world seemed to produce them. <laughs> but again, 11 in the morning, usually to, to eight at night, long days. The Civic Center, we got some pictures of that. And it was the first one to have a passport. We got some pictures of that. Uh, and I think things like this is what the North Museum is doing now. Uh, with stamps and passports. The first IPEX catalog with partial color and uh, multiple issues put out by the post office and several foreign countries as well, kind of enter honoring the country's bicentennial and the stamp show. Uh, the committee, the patronage by the FIP and a lot of support from APS, many staffers involved. You know, I did, haven't mentioned APS as much up to now. They've been involved, but Every year since their involvement has been just been coming more and more and more. I mean, culminating in uh, 2016, uh, I said between Megan and um, oh, Ken Martin, you know, they seem to keep the thing going, you know, in New York. 
did a government exhibit uh, for these different areas to look at. The envelope company, banknote company, Smithsonian, Revolutionary, uh, Bicentennial Administration, a lot of stuff going on. And like in New York City and like in uh, Washington, D.C., a lot of stuff to see in Philadelphia. And you don't have to worry about, you know, reruns because somebody wasn't there before the show won't be there next year or in 10 years of the show. Fairmont Park, if you like World's Fairs, it's a great place to go. The zoo, the, you know, Independence Hall, the art museums, just a lot of tour information that they had available. Here is the uh, Civic Center. I have a beautiful postcard of this, but this is the add-on. So I'm assuming this is perhaps where the uh, exhibit went. What is interesting is this came from the inside of the catalog of the 76 show. And uh, a lot of activities have gone here, kind of died out not too long after with the new uh, convention center uh, in downtown yeah. Philadelphia, which was the uh, 2016 yeah. Democrat National Convention in that one. And this one had four uh, uh, presidential national conventions in it. Uh, the Beatles, the Stones, uh, a lot of the ex athletic events, just a great place. That's now the USPS. As I said the other day, I'll always be the USPOD to me, but uh, the United States Postal Service, uh, the four souvenir sheets, and we'll look at those and some of the interesting things with them. Uh, the, the 13 cent stamp, Ben Franklin stamp, uh, commemorative panels were uh, new just a few years earlier, and there's one for the show. And uh, no more albums at this, everything were frames. Okay, we can go through these pretty quickly. These are the ones that don't get sold when we have them at the club auction. I think if I put them out as door prizes, I don't even know if people would take them, which is unfortunate. There are beautiful paintings, but they just didn't reduce well. As you know, if I go through, it's hard to see the value in two out of these or in what, in what country they are. You can see them in this one and this one, but uh, I don't know about the other ones. Look at that. Again, great historical paintings. Another problem was the, the perforations. They made them difficult to separate. Crossing the Delaware. Valley Forge. Can, can you tell what that is? And again, this is from a couple of years ago. I think I actually made these scans of my originals. You know, they're not, you know, they're not out of a book or anything, but, but this, this, the quality, this did not come out very good. And you can see when it came to the cache makers, they didn't really want to use them. A few of the stamps were bright enough that it would work out, but between the uh, perforations, tearing them apart, and the uh, unreadability of the denomination and the country made it difficult. Those who study uh, sensory and perceptional uh, psychology, they call it visual figure ground perception, you know, I meaning you can't see the forest for the trees. And in many cases, you couldn't see what the denomination was. So they had to come up with a an alternate and they'd get as many stamps as they could with Philadelphia themes and they would use these. So it's very difficult to find these. Uh, this is one of the few covers I've seen uh, with this uh, stamp from that series on it. And it's a shame because it would have been a nice set it would have been uh, if you could get them. But again, you can't even sell the stamps or postage because whenever I use them, I was right underneath, you know, in, in pencil, you know, this is a 10 cent stamp or a 13 cent stamp because you can't tell. And what's, what I, what's happening now is every day has a different cancel, specialist day, society's day. And this is collector's day, which would come out to June 3rd, which you can see. So if you, you get a, a cover and cancel it every day of the show, uh, you get a whole bunch of uh, these. This is from Steve. These are the different show cover, show cancels. Uh, Mike Box sent me this and I said, Mike, I'm going to save this. Number one, it, most of them were canceled. And <laughs> number two, can you tell what they are? You know, again, very difficult. That's a shame because it's, it's a beautiful painting, historically relevant to the show. But just, you know, this one did fine, but uh, not practical. Mm -hmm. These are collectible. I probably have a whole set of these or two. There's a stamp itself. I just love this one as a purist, it, the name of the show, where it is, the dates, you know, the name, 
how much it's worth. I just like that kind of one. Uh, my other favorite is the 1986 uh, show, Maripex. This is one for Writer's Day. Uh, Netherlands. They got very involved in the show. They had a handbook and they honored the bicentennial and they honored the, the show itself. They put out a stamp. I took this one from a book, from an image at Benjamin Franklin. So I'm sorry for, the, for that. I want to try to get a better version of that, but for art craft. Now, there's art craft and there's art master. And this top is art master. Uh, and his, there's the art craft one. And why that's on there, I don't know. Probably because it happened around that time. And the, you know, the dates match. So somebody put it on there. But again, the stamp and uh, the 24th day cancellation. The ones with the silk uh, cachets, Colorado silks. Does anybody know, are they still in business? I don't know. Fleetwood, he may be. Colorado just went out of business. So what, what's that? The Colorado covers just went out. Oh, business. did they? Okay, yeah. It's hard when you start to see company. You know, the, the day I, I really panic because when they'll say, you know, uh, Scotts is no longer making the catalog or something. <laughs> they know you know we're dead in the water, but the, so far they're hanging in there. Postmasters of America don't know that one. Junior philatelists. There's no uh, franking or anything, but it's they had enough uh, presence that they made two different kinds of envelopes. This one I liked. Uh, they actually had this at the show. The, 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 the last of it was in 1974. The show was in 76. So somebody took their cover with the, the, the souvenir cancel at the time for the last day. And then they brought it to... Uh, get it franked on this side, maybe even saving it for just that reason. And then again, this was on exhibit by the post office at the show. A lot of activities going on, uh, printing presses, uh, long lines as usual at the post office. And the Boris, 105 dealers from around the world. The largest vendor was the post office. They make it very well. And when you think about it, they did not go to the first show. They said, that's the, actually in the literature, it said it's for screwballs. And then they uh, realized between 1913, 1926, you know, stamp collectors spend money <laughs> and they've done well ever since. They've probably been one of the best, most successful vendors at these shows. Again, super booths that they had, large ones. Uh, more postal administrators just, just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what I want to know, if they know yet, uh, what are going to be the differences in some of the shows in Boston that are coming up? I'm starting to see also meetings of philatelic societies. You know, we'll meet at the international show. They uh, receive members and they recruit new ones. Uh, the labels, these are self-stick. Uh, this is the catalog, one of the first in color. And it had a, an, an addition inside. It was bound, so I'll show you. This is the one, the Re American Revolution Bicentennial Administration honored the souvenir sheet by the Bureau of Printing and Engraving. It was technically the first bound philatelic item in an IPEX catalog. 1926 catalog did have a, a glass scene attached uh, with four show Cinderella's in it, as far as an edition. And for those who remember, there was editions and uh, stamp souvenir shoots bound and included into the 2006 uh, catalog, but not 2016 that I remember. Uh, the exhibits, 2,500 to 3,000, the estimates vary. See the different categories, British, Commonwealth, the US, Aerophilately, miscellaneous. We had Christmas seals uh, our last meeting and they had uh, some of these number ones of the world inverted centers. They had youth categories, uh, literature and books. Um, I have to look, I don't know if this is the first time where they had literature competitions 
So first I have noted on, on my slides. Afghanistan won the international classic US 4781 won the US national group and the Hawaiian missionaries. You just look at the value of what those things cost and uh, you can see why they, they do well. Honor class was the best among the previous high award winners and that was Great Britain. A couple extra things in there, they had the aristocrats of Flaley and I, I gotta do a little bit more research what the difference between that and the court of honor is. Maybe this is even, even better, but just a, a lot of great material. And a lot of this is pictured in the catalog. So if you have that catalog, you can see uh, in color uh, what was on display at these. I believe these were all, uh, I don't think these were judged, but there's more to show you. Like when they show you the, the uh, Green Beret, the, yeah, the British Guiana, and the two Mauritius covers, you know, the post office one. Uh, just a lot of good stuff. Royal Collection, Philatelic Foundation. A lot of neat things to see. And, uh, you know, these are things that are rarely together as much as they are when you go to an international show. I've never been to a foreign international show, but I imagine even there, uh, they do well. There's a commemorative panel. These are a little bigger than eight by 10, thick stock. Uh, they have special um, albums that you can put them in with the plastic sheets. And uh, the souvenir was added on to this one. As I said, they will uh, cancel anything There's on the Benjamin, you know, this being the Benjamin Franklin step, as long as the postage denomination is correct. Uh, from Poland, Mexico, and Portugal. Again, the bicentennial and the show, which is kind of nice to see. Honored uh, by uh, Sweden. And then our, you know, the Ericsson stamp. That's one of the few sh stamps uh, of that era, that year, 19, whatever, 1926, that sells above 20 cents and the value above 20 cents for 25 cents in the catalog. I still use them as postage when I get them. There's the Netherlands, a few days, it was canceled a few days before the show. There's uh, Republic of China, Taiwan, Formosa. A little bit of a close up. Again, canceled on the 29th of May. And this is an international you know, for the, the whole works. So I'm assuming at, at their philatelic uh, window, they just did it there in Philadelphia for you. But Again, it mentions the, um, the show itself. A hungry postal stationery. And to get the cancel, somebody just put on the 13 US cent stamp on there. And they got the US cancel. And this one is the foreign one from Hungary. The passport. And if, what we're talking about, each page has a different country, a country who is there with a philatelic office selling stamps. So you go to each of those countries, you buy the stamps and they'll cancel them for you. So by the time you're done, you have a very attractive souvenir, things that can take forever. And if you only have one day to show, you're kind of you're lost, but the, the cancels are very attractive as well. But again, the name of the show, the date and so forth. They're probably about a quarter, of, a little less than a quarter of an inch stick. More souvenirs, souvenir society card, a season pass. Hope you didn't pay anything for it. And this is interesting. Uh, Dave, you're mentioning uh, George Turner's. This uh, was given to me. This is George Brett's uh, kind of the, the final report that came out mm. well after the show. Everything is bound into it. This is about an inch and three quarters thick, uh, thick fully well library bound and it has the catalog it has uh information in the different languages and what i like about it is that it has at the end a photo section so like most catalogs it only tells you what's going on up to the show the photo section had they have the winners of the awards they have um, some of the people they have candid shots shots of the the frames being you know all set up and ready to go just a, a very nice souvenir Inside was a 
business card from James DeVos, uh, who was president, I guess, of the show, but he was also president of APS at the time. And, Executive uh, director of APS. Your director, yeah. Yeah, not president, yeah, director. Uh, the the in-house guy. And uh, what did it say, George Brett? He was listed as a uh, regional representative. Do you know how many they gave out of these, Steve? Any idea? The, committee oh, the post show report, they gave out unlimited numbers, but they gave the whole show. You know what? My teacher and my mentor, Alan Warren, is sitting right here. Well, far be it for me to answer any of these questions. Alan was one of the most active members of the Interfil Committee right. and made the show go. So I will yield that question to Alan. What was the question again? <laughs> the question was <laughs> What about this book? First of all, there's a, a terrible typo on George, George W. Brett's copy because his last name is B R E T T. And yes. somehow the show committee picked it up as B R E T E. And the question was how many of these final reports were made? Thousands. But the printed, imprinted copies were a thank you gift to the show committee. Correct, mm -hmm. Alan? Yeah. They were all bound together, uh, yes. the catalog and the uh, other right. publications. As uh, one one unit, there were very few of those. I don't know the total number. They were given to basically officers of the uh, organization. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, in the back, was, back, the report itself was widely available. You could find it on eBay for a couple of bucks. This thing, okay, yeah. The back has a, like a sleeve in it where you can add in different souvenirs and things like that. You know, maps and whatever. Boat your boat. So, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the old days, we used to have Philatelic columns in the newspaper and our own uh, Dick Kohlberg did one in the Lancaster paper for many years. And one of the reasons I got back in, I look forward to reading it every Tuesday before I get back into collecting. But this was in the New York Times. And uh, that is it on 76. And this, uh, my acknowledgments to Stephen Jay for his articles, Herb Trenchard for his, Marjorie Senti for hers. John Hotzner's, again, uh, everything is is out there. It's just taking the time to compile it, collect the information, uh, get the catalogs when available. Now the key is getting ready for Boston 2026. That's what I have. Questions from you? Paul, oh, I have a round of applause. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was a great presentation. That's I have it. two comments about two of the shows, Paul. Um, mm -hmm. You're now looking at the secretary of Interfield 76. The core committee for the organization was formed by people who were involved with the CPAD show in Philadelphia. So mm -hmm. Bob Stiss and Ed Whiting, who was the treasurer, and Irv Weinberg, myself, John Hacker, and many others hey. uh, formed the nucleus of the organizing committee mm -hmm. for uh, Um, and uh, <clears throat> they uh, started in the late 1960s to uh, form a committee to plan for the 1976 show. And it was really when the APS stopped in and supplied Bud Sellers and uh, Jim DeVos as the two uh, co-honchos that it really took off. But Bob Stiss, as executive director, was the only paid position. The rest of us were volunteers. Was this the first year of big involvement from APS? That was my impression. Yourself. <laughs> Steve might know better. The, uh, they the, were heavily um, involved. It's very important to, to add to this presentation. A very First of all, I want to say thank you, Paul. This is luxurious. You are amazing. The other day, Paul Peterson, this amazing person, said to me, I don't think too many of my club members are going to be interested in this topic. It's boring. It's only interesting to a few people. I didn't say anything to him the other day because I wanted to be here tonight to say to all of you, it's anything but boring. Because if you start in 1913 and you go to 2016, you've got the history of the hobby in every single way, every 10 years. Simple things like who had super boots and when. There's a whole story just in the fact that Gimbals and Jacques Minkus had the super booth when he did. I mean, there's, there's, there's a thousand stories here that when you expand on these 120 slides and just these three shows, never mind the 12 shows, uh, it's the whole history of the hobby. 
And I, 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 I truly uh, admire and, and thank Paul for the amazing amount of work he's done to put all this together. And he will continue to do it because he's going to have all 12 shows showing in Boston in, in 2026. We should all live and be well and be there to applaud him for exactly. all of these presentations. Yeah, uh, it's important to note one thing. Paul talks about the 89 show, World Stamp Expo, and the 92 show. Those were the post office's attempt, and you'll never see it again, the United States Postal Service, to say to the hobby, we love you and we care about you and we will help you. They ran World Stamp, show, uh, World Stamp Expo 89. It was fairly successful. The 92 show, the Columbus show, the anniversary of Columbus's show in Chicago, they're not included in the IPEXs for a simple reason. Since 1966, the APS got involved in representing the United States in the Federation of Inter International Philanthropy, the famous FIP. The reason the show is coming up in Boston in 2026, or the reason the show went to New York in 2016, was it was the American Philatelic Society, which I hope we are all members. I hope we have 100% membership on this slideshow. It's the APS that every 10 years has to struggle with granting patronage to who we will have as the every year, 10-year decennial show in the United States. So it's the APS that responded to New York's presentation. In 2016, Columbus wanted it, and New York wanted it, and APS chose New York. In 2026, there weren't too many people competing, um, and you've got it in Boston, but it's because of APS patronage. So they are the only shows that count because the APS grants the patronage. Uh, and I, I just think that's an important distinction between with, with the every 10 year decennial show. Yeah, that's what I didn't know. I knew there uh, something was not checked off that they didn't have. Very good. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Questions, anybody else? I had another comment about the 1955 FIPEC show. Mm -hmm. uh, a very significant event took place there. You mentioned the super booth that uh, Washington Press had, and Leo and Sam August were, were sponsoring the establishment of the American First Aid Cover Society. The society had a booth there, began uh, uh, signing up members, and uh, so the society has been in existence for over 65 years now. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. And I think with a lot of that and, you know, Washington press, uh, that's one of the reasons the, the labels kind of went out because of the kind of being replaced of what's right. coming next. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We're going to take this off.